Matthew 7, and we're going to be reading the scriptures of just two, 7 and 8. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. And uh, we're just so thankful um, for all those that are here. And we know the song. Help me sing the song. And how does it go? Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burdens down, I feel better, so much better. Since I lay my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. They say, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I laid my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Heavenly Gracious Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. God, let's sing, God, we should lay our burdens down before you, Father God. We understand, Father God, that when we lay our burdens down, it's easy, Father God. We understand when we give it to you, God, that you take over. And when you take over, Father God, we have a peace that man can't stop. And so, God, now as we get into the word of God, as we get ready to understand what you may have for us, God, I ask you right now that you take over. God, I ask you that there's a seed planted, that there's something that is watered, Father God, that you can give the increase. God, even those that may seek on this video, God, that they understand that they must have a relationship with you. God, we just thank you right now as we continue not only to pray for this nation and pray for us, Father God, but to give you glory in it all. God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we all say, Amen. Amen. Uh, again, we're going to be in the book of Matthew, King James Version. Um, we're going to be reading uh, just verses 7 and 8. Um, if you have your, your Bibles, you may go ahead and stand. And I will read. <laughs> what it simply says is this. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Blessed to the reason the doers of the word, you may be seated. You, 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 you may be seated. Uh, I, I, I thank God for uh, giving me this uh I was in a service um, getting reps. What do you mean? I, I was not in the pulpit. I was sitting in the back. And, and I, for many of that preach, you understand, sometimes it feels good just to sit in the back and, and get a worship on them. But while I was in this service, I, I noticed that this preacher, he was preaching a word. He was, he was preaching fire for those that wanted to hear. But unfortunately, there was a, a, a lady 
that uh, came in with a cane and she had slippers on uh, um, and you could tell that she wasn't of the best health. That, and when she came in this building, uh, she sat next to what appeared to be her husband. I assume that because he had a ring on and she had a ring on and, and she sat there. But why this preacher was preaching fire and why this preacher was preaching the law, why we couldn't get what we needed from the Lord, the whole entire service, she was talking to her husband looking at a cell phone. I'm sitting in the back right behind them and I realized that, that the pastor me, I had to realize it wasn't my church home. I wanted to slap the people and say, pay attention. You're missing something. But what I noticed was that she, the whole time, and I think the husband just trying to be peaceful and minimal, he was staring at the preacher, but he was nodding her head, listening, and then me, I'm saying, why don't you say, hey, hey, we're trying to hear what the word of God is trying to share. But this whole entire time watching this woman, she missed what God had for her. In fact, the sermon that I thought would have been talking directly to her. It was talking about how we want healing and how we want to get things, but we are not paying attention. That's what the sermon was about. And I thank God for inspiring me to write this message. And the title of this message is, You Can't Just Show Up. Amen. There's some action that has to happen for a reaction. You can't just show up. And even when I look at this, we understand in Matthew 7, this is an object of Christ talking to us, not only before he gets to this 7 and 8, but about accountability and responsibility. Well, what do you mean? He shares with us that we shouldn't judge one another in Matthew 7. He shares with us that how can you condemn somebody and you act in a certain way? He's talking about accountability and responsibility before he even gets to ask. He's saying that now you can't even be a hypocrite. You got to take that moat, that beam out of your own eye. How can you talk about somebody else's servant? In fact, you see a familiar uh, a chapter in Luke 11 where he's saying something similar. But he, and now he is telling us how we have to be persistent. He's saying that how can you knock at your, your, your neighbor or your friend's house? You have to keep on knocking. But here today, our message is, you can't just show up. And so, not to be here alone today, when we start to look at this chapter, he starts to begin with, there has to be an action so you can get a reaction. In fact, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, if you don't know him, he, he was known to be a, a, a physicist. He was known to be a great man. Matter of fact, what we call the third law of motion, he was saying that when it comes to action, there's going to be an equally amount of reaction. The problem is that we have to ask ourselves, what kind of action are we taking? And what kind of reaction are we receiving? Here, when we look at this book right here, Jesus is showing us how we should conduct ourselves, not only in our character, but how that we should say that we are disciples of Christ. Before you start to ask of the Lord, you must make sure that you are in the place that you need to be to receive what God has for you. Amen. Here, when we look at this aspect of this message, we must understand that I must be right in Lord's sight before I start to ask him to receive anything that God has for me. I know that can be a hard pill for some of us because I know that we think we're the best thing since sliced bread. I believe because I can sing real good that God should give me what I desire, but I am not treating people with love. We first must be right. Here, we're looking at what I would call our first bullet point. Okay? I won't be here long today, but we have to understand that when we look back at this chapter, the first thing it says on this verse 7, it says ask. Now, when I look at this word ask, this word ask is showing me that it means to make your request. It, it means to also demand. It means to that we must give a petition to God. Well, what do you mean in saying that I must seek God 
first in what I'm doing. I have to have a relationship with God to even ask. It's saying ask and it shall be giving. But what it shows me is that it is a reaction only after our action. It shows that we must take the first steps. This lets us know that it should always be God first. Amen. See, a lot of times we seek an answers, but we are not doing what we need to do. What do, what do, you, what do you mean? I, I'm not in my word like I need to be, Lord, but I'm going to ask you. Lord, I, I, I'm not even showing up to Sunday service, but I'm going to ask you. God, I need to be in position so that I can ask you and so that I can receive. And guess what? What I love about it, we read it all the time, touch and agree. What do, you, what do you mean? Well, if I'm not even assembling around the people, then how can I just agree and ask the Father so it can be given? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just can't show up and then expect things to happen. I have to participate so that God can give me what I don't even deserve. What do you, what do you mean, grace and, and, and mercy? Yeah. But have you ever just walked to your job and just stood out there? You might not have that job too long because they're not going to pay you for just being cute. You're going to have to do some action. Whatever your job is, you're going to have to do some work. And in that position, while you're doing some work, you get paid. But I thank God because he pays me first before I even do the work. But as I continue to do the work, he's going to keep on blessing me. Go to your job, just show up and look cute, and we're gonna see you tomorrow at the unemployment line. Talking about they let me go. I don't know why. In this aspect of the scripture, it, it, it is saying that not only must I ask God to be given, but I have to be in his presence. Matter of fact, I like it because it matches up with Philippians 4 and 6. And when I look at Philippians 4 and 6, we know what it says, but I just like to read it because it tells us to be careful for nothing. It, 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 it tells us that in, in all things, we must go uh, to God. And, and as a matter of fact, what it says is this, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto to God. But if I was to take a moment right there, one other version says be anxious for nothing. But I like this and say, be careful for nothing. It's saying nothing's secure but God. It's saying that Amen. if you want to have your security, if you want to have your protection, then you need to understand that I must be in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah, it's saying, and then when I'm in the presence of God, guess what? In everything, it say some things, and then it say one or two. It said in everything by prayer and supplication. That means not only God am I meditating on you, but God not only am I being silent listening to you, but now I'm going to do my supplication. I'm going to do my faith work. I'm going to move, understanding that you will give me anything that I ask you according to your will. It says in everything and prayer and supplication. Watch this though. But with thanksgiving. How many of us during the storm can say, God, I thank you anyway. God, I understand that I lost my father. God, but I thank you anyway. God, I understand that I might have lost my job, but I thank you anyway. God, I understand that things might not look like they want to, but I thank you anyway because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I understand, Father God, that you can bring me through. So I'm in position to ask. I have to make my supplication, I have to make my petition known, but I can only do that in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. A lot of times we'll find ourselves out of the presence of the Lord yeah. and then not understanding why trouble is seen like it's beating us on every end. We're not understanding that now we're doing what the world wants us to do and the world is here to destroy us. All I'm saying is that we can't just show up, but we got to have some action for the proper reaction. Yeah. Matter of fact, if I was to have a, a point two to this, the point two was, the next thing you see, it says seek. Well, when I look at this word seek, it, 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 I it understand that I have to search for something. It means desire. It also means that to, to obtain. I have to seek so that I can find. Amen. Well, what do, what do you mean? I can't just sit on my couch and eat popcorn and think that a job is just going to come on my door. 
I, I can't just sit around and think that the bills is going to get, get paid. My brother said something a long time ago. He said, God provides the food for the birds. But it just don't drop them in his lap. They got to go out and get something. I'm telling us that we got to go out and get something. What do you mean? We got to go out and get Jesus. We got to go out and understand discipleship. We got to go out and understand that I have to use the anointing of this Holy Spirit that has been given to me so that it can profit me. You have to see there's an action that has to happen for a reaction. What are we seeking? What are we looking upon? Are we, are we looking for God? Who's the author and the finish? Or we're standing in his presence and now we're saying, God, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to do the will. I'm going to walk because when I'm seeking for something, that means it might not be right in front of me. What do you mean? That means I have to might go over and look under some rock. That means I might have to open up a closet or two. That means I might have to go out beyond my place of safety. Are we going out in the place of out of our place of safety, saying, "God, I know that you are with me. I understand Psalms 23, and even though I want to lay down around green pastures, sometimes I'm gonna have to go through that valley, and sometimes the shadow of death might seem like it's going against me. But I understand you leadeth me, and when you leadeth me, I understand that you are my rod and you are my staff. And the Bible tells me that surely, grace and mercy, surely, mercy should follow me all my days." So God, I'm going to continue to seek and it's starting seeking you. It's starting with me seeking your word. It's starting with you implanted in me, Father God, a clean heart that I can continue to move and just give glory to your name. Are we seeking? What do we do in the bad times? Are we seeking? What do we do when we feel like we want to give up? Are we seeking? What do we do when they say that we can't? But we said, God said, I can. What are we doing but giving God glory? That's what we need to do. Saying, God, I thank you. You can't just show up. In this aspect of seeking, it lets us understand Galatians 5.22. What was Galatians 5.22? I'm so glad you asked. What it is is that we have to understand that we have to embody. We have to embody. Guess what? The fruit of the Spirit. Amen. In my seeking, what am I seeking? I need to be seeking the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. What does it say? It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23 says, meekness, temperance, against sins, there is no law. Well, wait, 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 wait. Amen. If I'm seeking everlasting life, mm -hmm. if I'm seeking joy, yeah. if I'm seeking Jesus, then I must seek his Spirit. And in me seeking the spirit, I must say, God, give me the fruit. God, I need the fruit that you bear. God, I need to look like you. I, I, I need to uh, be an example of what Christ is. And that means not only must I be loving, but I must understand patience. And I, I must Amen. understand wrong suffering. Yeah. God, I can't just think that you're going to drop it in my lap, but I have to understand the process that you're going to bring me through. God, I need you to save me, but God, I need you to help me that I can help others in the same process that you've helped me. What, 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 what do you mean? If I'm not bearing the fruit of the Spirit, then guess what? I am bearing things that can only destroy others. But I'm saying when you just show up, you can miss out what God is trying to give you because you're not taking the action that is needed for the proper reaction that you want. In our life, we have these things that we do, and then we expect good to come out of it, but we didn't start with, I say the Lord. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that we have to continue to seek so we can understand that when I seek you, God, all things are possible. And it brings me to, to this last point, which is knocking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Knocking, 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 knocking. I have to knock now. What, 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 what do you mean? He told me that I had to ask. But then he told me I had to seek. And then he said, I have to knock. Well, guess what? That lets me know that sometimes it's going to be what appears to be something in the way. Sometimes in our life, we're going to come against a petition. We're going to come against a wall that you're going to have to knock down. What I might have to knock down poverty. I, I might have to knock down hate. I might have to knock down death because it's trying to attack. But I understand that God said death has no more sting. That God said we have the victory. But are we knocking it down? 
When we look at this word knock, we got to understand it means to beat. It means to open a door. It means to apply pressure. It means that I'm doing an action of something physical now. What do you mean? I, I, first, I'm getting on my knees and I'm praying. And I'm saying, God, I'm going to do But then I'm saying, God, it doesn't matter who's trying to come against me because I understand that you are with me. And guess what? If I have to pick up that shield of faith, if I have to pick up that sword and slay, I'm going to say, come on, Goliath. You can't stop me. I've been through this and I, I've been through that. And God has been with me on the other side. But we can't just sit down and then expect God to stand up. We have to do some now. So that we continue to gain admittance. Because that's another thing. We're not, I'm knocking so that I can get the opportunity to be. I need to knock so the door can open. Uh, many of times I, I've seen people that say they want to work but they don't go on job interviews. I, I, I see people say they, they want to do better, but we're not affecting change. You keep doing the same thing of insanity. We know the definition of insanity. We said it all, all the time. Continue to do the same thing, expecting a different result. So my question is, what are we knocking on? A lot of us not truly knocking on Jesus the way we should knock on Jesus. We rather knock on our friend and we trust our friend. I always love to watch these children talk to their friends and then I always tell them, y'all are talking to each other to get dumb answers. <laughs> you are trying to achieve something that this person is trying to achieve too and y'all trying to figure it out instead of going to the source. Instead of finding the teacher. A lot of times in our Christian life, we, we, we talk to one another, but we ain't talking to the Lord, who's the source of the God is where we need to be. We're finding ourselves leading to our own understanding. We're finding ourselves trying to make our own path. But when we understand to acknowledge Him, when we understand to acknowledge God, watch Him direct our path, watch Him knock down the wall, watch Him bring up the head of protection. But we have to knock so that we can gain. I have to ask, I have to seek, I have to knock so the door can be opened. I am making it up when we look at the scripture. He's showing us a process. Yeah, baby, I understand that you saved and, and, and how to favor and you're sanctified. But if you ain't asking me in the right way, if you're not doing what you need to do, guess what? You ain't going to receive you ain't going to even get the answer that you're seeking for. Peace be still. I need you to be still and understand what I'm trying to show you. So you need to have some meditation time and you need to have a relationship time with me so I can guide and direct you. And then only as I guide and direct you, guess what? Now you got to seek because now after you didn't ask me and I didn't put out the plan, guess what? You got to walk through it. You can't be like Joel and say, I ain't going that way. I, 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 I have to be like Moses. Let my people go. I have to be here. Like Noah. God, I understand. I might not understand what this rain you're talking about. But you told me to build it and I'm going to build it. And I'm going to have faith in that thing. God, and we're going to move, God, because you are with me. Why? Because I'm seeking and now I'm finding what you have for me. A lot of times in our life we want to understand our purpose and we want to understand our placement in life. But we're not finding ourselves seeking. How can you be a doctor and you never go to school? A million times us, we don't find our place where we need to be in the Lord because we fail to seek. And when I look at this word seeking, when I look at this word seeking, I understand that it's going to mean the journey. But then once we start to seek and we find, are we knocking? Those that know that I, I believe in, uh, in development and I believe in, in, in empowering, but if we don't have a network, how can you get the deal? You have to put yourself in place so that you can knock on the door of opportunity. And the door of opportunity ain't going to open until you knock. Ain't nobody psychic around here. Ain't nobody trying to guess what you, what you have. You have to let them know, here I am, man. And I am what God said I should be. And God is bringing me to the place so that you can see what God can do. But if I fail to knock, then it fails to open. I'm telling you that we have to ask 
We are to knock. Matter of fact, Hebrews 11 and 6, what does it say? Hebrews 11 and 6 says this. It says, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you mean to tell me that not only do I, I have to seek and I have to uh, uh, knock, but I got to have faith in that thing? Huh? Well, it's impossible to please God without it. So how can I even go before the presence of the Lord and ask God anything if I don't have faith? How can I go and seek and, 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 and know that I'm going to accomplish with victory if I don't have faith in it? How can I knock on the door? Because we know we don't like to deal with strangers. Some of us are introverted people. But now I have to be in the presence of a place, and a place of unknown, a place of unfamiliar? Yes, you do, because you have to understand that God is with you. All I'm saying is that we have to understand the scriptures through and through and understand that all things are possible with God. So don't let worry and don't let fear stop you from accomplishing what you need. But you got to do more than just show up. In this place of where we are, we got to do more than show up. Our action must align with the word of God to get the reaction that we need from God. Well, what do you mean when I show up, I have to come with an expectancy that I'm not only going to ask God, but I'm going to receive from God. And when I ask and receive from God, guess what? I understand that I'm showing up and my action is going to help me with my healing. I know when I'm showing up, my action is going to help me with my mind. I know when I show up, God is going to sanctify me and he's going to redeem me. How do I know that? Because he already did it. He already started when he went to a place called Calvary, when they already hung him up and they stretched him out. He said, I'm going to do this for you. Because Father, he said, I am here to sacrifice, to atone, to redeem the world. When we understand that what Christ has already started, all we got to do is be in that process and say, God, I understand that you already started. So I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on seeking. But I understand I have to do more than just show up. I have to go out to the poor. I have to go out to the jails. I have to go out and feed and show how good God is in. God, I understand if I don't do it, the enemy is out there planting seeds. And some of them come out like wolf and sheep clothing. Some of them say they're Christians, but act like they're a part of the devil's team. You know, the hell one on one, yeah. They out there doing the thing, and if we don't share up as Christians saying, I say the Lord, this is the truth, and this was what the truth say, then they don't think they win. But I'm telling us that we got to show up, and that means starting in a church house. That means no one should have to tell you how to volunteer for something, no one should have to tell you how to do certain things. You should want to do it because you understand God is saying, I'm pleased. As you've done unto the least of them, you've done unto me. But it takes us to be able to show up for the action so we can receive the reaction. I don't know about you, but I know that God is good this morning. I don't know about you, but I understand that you might have been short, but God is showing you that when we show up, we must perform because we can miss out on our blessings. Many of us miss out on our blessings because we just showed up and didn't do nothing. How can you have a successful relationship when you just show up but don't do nothing? You there. You ain't telling nobody you love them. You ain't hugging them. You ain't doing nothing. And they just staring at you. And then what's puzzling sometimes is that you might do an action and then be shocked the reaction that you get. Hold on. I don't often let us go, but this is, this, 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 this is the thing. For every action, there's a reaction. This was given by Aristotle. Aristotle said that. He said, for every action, there's a, a reaction. But sometimes you act like a fool and then it'd be, be shocked that they act a fool back with you. You do something wrong and then expect you know, them, them not to do nothing. And in fact, you see this a lot with Christian folk. What do you mean? They think, oh, she's holy. She ain't gonna do it. They think they can do you wrong and then expect you not to say nothing to them. Now, I'm not telling you to sin in your nature, but guess what? I'm going to rebuke you. And what that means, I'm going to correct you. That means I'm going to tell you, you want to lie on me? I'm going to tell you that's a lie. You know what I mean? You want to you drag my name? I'm going to tell you that's not true. I'm not going to take vengeance because vengeance is mine, said the Lord. But I need you to understand something. Even when we look at Matthew above that verse, he says, Give not what is holy unto the dogs. He says, Cast not your pearls 
with both swine. And so then he tells you to start to ask for things. So what he's saying, I need to have accountability and responsibility. What he's saying is this. When you understand the anointing and the gift that you have, you have to cherish that thing and treat it with care. No, you're not going to judge. You're not going to condemn. You're not going to do that. But you need to understand that when I give you this gift, when I answer to you, that you have to understand, yes, all perfect gifts come from the Father of life. But you have a responsibility when it comes with it. And you will the fool if you let them keep using you in the process when God is saying, I need you to break away from that. I need you to leave that alone. I need you to let me handle that. And you go about your business. I'm just talking with us today. I, I, I need us to understand, even when you look at Luke and what it tells us. He says, what man, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, would give, you know, a serpent. What man would give a stone when, when you're asking for things? He also goes in there and talks about evil people do things you know, for those that they think they love. But as Christians, there should be a separation and it should show us that not only do we show up in times that we want to be, but we need to show up times when we need to be and we don't even want to be there because that's what God did for us. So I don't know who may be leading this or who might need this, but I'm saying when you show up, have some good action. And when you show up, make sure that action is aligned with God so you can get the reaction that you need in the name of Jesus. Do we understand? Is God good this morning? Hallelujah. And so at this particular time, we say, guess what? The doors of the church are open because you might seek you know, a, a church home. You might need prayer. You might need to be in the place. The doors of the church are open. 